Hi, I'm Dorian, or Leviathan of my friends, and I'm an eldritch abomination lurking in the corners of your attic. I'm also an artist who's here to absolutely butcher a PNG tuber tutorial that I made during a, an ADHD hyperfixation, but that's okay. <laughs> Now, before we get started, I just need to change something here. There we go. Let's see if I can teach you a thing or two. I was already going to remake my YouTube sprites. I just didn't like them. I didn't know I, uh, like how I looked in them. I felt like maybe I was just too bug-eyed or something, which maybe is ironic considering what I settled on. I just wanted to make myself look more like I ha uh, how I did in my thumbnails, which I did pretty well, hopefully. Um, but my husband pointed out that I should make a PNG tuber or try to make one. Um, now, my computer sucks. It doesn't have uh, an audio driver. It was just made without one. I'm not entirely sure why. The company just decided to make them without. Um, so I can't really uh, stream or anything like that at the moment, but I thought maybe this would be useful for the future at the very least. I think PNG Tuber Plus, uh, which I will be showing you later as a uh, rigging software, is probably your best bet for a basic, um, like a beginner level. Um, it, it has a lot of great options. <laughs> So the only thing that you truly need to know for this program is that you need to separate everything into layers. So in this part um, where I'm lining things, you will see that I'm naming the layers as I go and I'm separating everything out and making sure that they have enclosed lines. That's incredibly important, helps streamline your process as well so that you can uh, color by uh, dropping dropping the colors. But you definitely really want to make sure that your hair, your eyes, any expressions, uh, your clothing even, little bits of jewelry, literally anything that you want to be animated needs to be separated into layers otherwise you're not going to have a great time um animating your your rig uh it's just not going to work now if you need an example if that's not um incredibly clear what i did was do a separate layer for another mouth a closed mouth my regular open mouth uh base base head where it's just completely bald no hair just the hair earrings, uh, my chest, my pants, and any of my arm movements uh, or where they're resting at my side, I separated all of those out. Um, I also did separate out the strings of my um, my hoodie just because I wasn't I wasn't sure how they would really react in the engine itself. Um, I, I'm not sure it really added to anything, but it's the thought that counts. <laughs> And after you're all done making your model, you need to save each little piece that you've made into individual uh, transparent images, .png files, if you really want to get specific. Uh, just take the, the background image off if you're using Procreate or even Clip Studio, and off you go. It will take a long time, depending on how many pieces of your model you have, but that's okay, because it's worth it in the end. All right, at this point, we're going to head over to Steam, and we're going to download PNG Tuber Plus, and then it's going to come up with this. This is the default model and art for the PNG Tuber when you boot this up. And uh, you, don't worry, you can replace this. You're going to replace it using the Add a Sprite, and you're going to have this pop up. The unfortunate part is that it doesn't let you search, so you are going to have to look for that address yourself, and I'm going to put up uh, put it up here on screen for you, just because it was a little hard to find, and I, w I wasn't entirely sure where to find it, so I also had to go look at a video to even find it. That is my only gripe with this software at the moment, so yeah, here it is. 
once you've done all that app data stuff, you're going to find all of your little bits and pieces in the correct folder uh, within that subfolder, and you're going to just start loading them. Now, mine look huge, and that is A-OK -okay because we're going to fix it. I drew in uh, my regular illustration size, and I didn't look up the size beforehand, which was my fault. Um, to make sure that... <laughs> you can actually see your sprite. You are going to press control and use your mouse wheel in and out until the uh, proper size comes up on the screen. Don't worry, don't panic if this happens to you. It is absolutely fixable. And here is my little Eldritch monstrosity after I've deleted the other model and what the art looks like all together. Now it it's gonna look a little weird, but that's okay. You have layers on the right-hand side of the screen that don't uh, come up when you're recording. Now, those are gonna be the layers that um, are, should all be named. You should name all of those beforehand within your art program, and you can pick and choose those, or you can use your scrolling wheel on your mouse to go through those and select each one. And as you go through each one, you want to click on your mouth and make it either open or closed. Uh, and same with your eyes as well. You want to click on the layer and make sure that with the little X buttons, you've clicked on the right icon. When you have clicked on the right icon, they should turn a, a bit transparent and you'll be able to see yourself talking. Now, I don't, uh, I get rid of my small mouth. I don't necessarily need it. I'm not entirely sure how to do expressions just yet, but I get rid of the small mouth and my, um, my hands that are pointing and sort of gesturing just because they, um, were not useful to me, perhaps. I'm going to explain everything using my finished model, which looks like this. Isn't he beautiful? All right, so you can see that there's a little bar up top that says bounce. That obviously controls how much you bounce. The higher the number, the bouncier you're going to be, the shorter no the number, the uh, sharper your bounce is going to be, uh, for lack of a better term. To demonstrate how you animate things and things like that, I am going to upload just my little pointing a uh, guy and we're going to hopefully get it to all of the right settings. I'm just trying to find it. And I think we found him. There he is. All right, so. With my left arm here, I'm going to demonstrate the sort of things that you can do with the X and the Y frequency. The X obviously moves it horizontally. Um, I don't really need that, so I'm not going to mess with it too much. I'm mostly going to mess with the Y frequencies, which are going to bounce your character up and down. It's going to move it that way. You want to make sure all of your numbers are the same across everything. That's just to make sure that nothing is bouncing out of sync. You don't necessarily want it to look that way. I suppose if you want to be chaotic, you certainly could. Like, for instance, here. Yeah, you really don't want that. But yeah, it's super simple. Um, you just mess around with as many settings as you want. Uh, it's pretty basic. It was honestly pretty intuitive once you got into it. And now I'm going to get my little guy uh, out of here, and this is what it should look like. Now I'm going to try and save him. You can really, you could probably save it anywhere, but I save it to the default uh, avatar to make sure that it loads up instead of that little white guy. And when you click that little X button, this is what it looks like, and you have your finished little talking guy. Isn't he so cute? Hopefully that was helpful for you, and I wish you all the luck in creating your little guy. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or even more suggestions, put them in the comments down below, and I'll see you later. Don't look in your attic.